In this tutorial, we'll talk about M Multi Analyzer from Melda Production. It is an easy to use and very helpful tool for mixing. The idea is to simultaneously analyze and compare signals from different tracks of the mix in a single plugin. First, I'm going to explain how it works, and then I will show some practical examples. Here is the main window of the plugin. It consists of several parts. The main controllers are located at the top. Below them is a tab set for analysis type selection. Lower, we find the main window of M Multi Analyzer. It is here where all analysis happens. On the left side, there are visual settings responsible for the name, color, and look of the graph. And below them is the list of all plugins used in the mixing project. Let's examine each controller. Averaging. This controller defines the period of time during which the incoming signal is sampled. Then the average value of that data is calculated and presented on the main window. It means the higher value you set here, the more time will be needed to process the data. That will slow down M Multi Analyzer's response. Another thing to understand is if an analyzed signal has lots of quiet parts or even a silence, those parts will be taken into account during averaging. This will lead to a lower amplitude on the graph. I will demonstrate it in the following example. I will start with zero milliseconds. The graph moves very fast as M Multi Analyzer tries to follow every change in the spectrum. Pay attention to the level of peaks. As you can see, assessing such detailed information is quite hard for our eyes. If I set the controller to 300 milliseconds, the graph is moving more smoothly now. Though it is easier to interpret, we must understand that what we are looking at isn't the true frequency response anymore. M Multi Analyzer shows us the average data for each 300 milliseconds. You can also notice that those peaks we observed before have disappeared. If I set averaging to 5 seconds, the graph changes very slowly. I guess you're wondering, okay, which setting is right? And the answer is, it depends. I will get back to it later. Right now, let's learn all the other controllers. Smoothness. If the previous controller levels out a spectrum's changes in time, then this parameter smooths out a frequency response on the frequency axis. To demonstrate it, I will use a noise generator followed by M oscillator as a source. Now if I move the smoothness knob clockwise, all peaks become wider and lower in amplitude. And if I set it to 20%, then all we can see is a very general curve. It can be very helpful if you need to assess a more general curve rather than single peaks. An alternative way to generalize a frequency response is to click on one third octave or one octave buttons on the main window. Don't forget to set smoothness to 0% first. Resolution. This controller sets a low threshold of the amplitude range M Multi Analyzer can show. You can also use the magnifying glass icons on the main window to zoom in or zoom out of the graph. The slash icon is for full zoom out. Gain simply moves the whole graph up and down. It can be useful if the input signal is too loud or quiet. Slope. By nature for majority of music sources, the energy of harmonics becomes lower and lower towards the high end of a frequency range. We can confirm it if we apply FFT analysis to those sources. For example, this is the spectrum of a snare, a vocal, in this tutorial, we'll talk about M Multi Analyzer, a violin. You can see they all trend similarly. That is, the harmonics amplitude is getting lower and lower. But how can we tell if the ratio between the energy of low and high frequency harmonics is right? By looking at a direct FFT analysis, we can't. However, we could do that if we compare the graph to some reference source. Knowing that our reference source has an equal energy in all parts of a frequency range, any deviation from its frequency will suggest an energetic imbalance in the source we explore. Such a reference source is a pink noise. It's known for having an equal energy in every octave of the frequency range we can hear. Logically, it would be convenient to present it as a horizontal line, and that is what slope controller does. If we set it to plus three decibels, the frequency response of the pink noise becomes horizontal. Now we don't even need the pink noise as a reference because we can simply compare any graph to the horizontal axis. 
If I look at the vocal spectrum again, I can tell that the part of low frequency spectrum overpowers the part at the high end. And perhaps I should pay attention to that. One more thing to mention is slope can be set to any value really. After all, our auditory system doesn't follow plus three decibels per octave rule. So why should your mix? This is simply an aid to ease analyzing for you and you are the one who sets the rules. Decay. This knob sets the time the curve takes to fall down from a current level to the bottom end if you press stop. The higher the value you set, the longer the time it will take. At 100% the curve doesn't fall at all, and thus M multi analyzer becomes maximum value analyzer. This controller shouldn't be confused with averaging. They both slow down plugins response, but in different manners. The first one sets the time for data to be collected, processed, and to give out the average result. Decay in its turn doesn't affect data at all. It adjusts the curve's decay time only. Thus, if you need to check RMS level, then set averaging to approximately 200 milliseconds and decay to 0%. If you want to track peak values, then set averaging to 0 milliseconds and decay between 70 and 90%. Deharmonize. This function diminishes harmonics level only. The fundamental stays at more or less the same level. It can be handy when searching for spectral collisions. See what happens when I move it. Now, let's have a look at the main window. Here we find four handy options. First one, pause, allows you to freeze the current state of a spectrum. It can be useful if you need some time to examine the graph. Second one is normalize. As in audio editor, this function looks for the highest peak in a frequency response, and then amplifies the entire spectrum till that peak has reached zero decibels. It can be handy when you compare frequency responses of several sources and don't really worry about their relative levels. Super resolution. Usually FFT analyzers have a bad resolution at the low frequency end. This function is trying to eliminate this imperfection. If I turn it on, M multi analyzer will improve the resolution at the low end. View type selects the way a spectrum is displayed. By default, the actual FFT analysis curve is selected. However, there will be many times when you will find one third octave or one octave options are more useful, as our auditory system perceives a signal as a combination of all its harmonics rather than a bunch of single sine waves. Don't forget to set smoothness to 0% when using the last two options. Now let's talk about types of analysis M Multi Analyzer has to offer. So far, I have been using examples of signals presented in the frequency domain, that is amplitude versus frequency plot. However, there is one more way to represent the same data, sonogram. Now the signal is presented in 3D view, time versus frequency versus amplitude. It looks unusual at the beginning, but because of that, this view may help you find something you could miss in the frequency domain. It's similar to checking your mix on a different set of monitors. Here, the amplitude is presented by the color's intensity. The higher the intensity, the higher the amplitude. Super resolution mode is especially appropriate here. Use the resolution knob to set the amount of information you need to see. Before covering the rest of the modes, I'd like to demonstrate one of M Multi Analyzer's key features collision of signals from several tracks. To do that, simply insert M Multi Analyzer into channels you'd like to compare. Name each instance by selecting a proper name from the preset pop-up window under this instance. Alternatively, you can type any name you like here. Choose a colour and select these view options if you want to. As you open a new instance, you will notice the track list is growing. You can also select spectrum of signals you would like to see on the plot by clicking on these buttons. I have plugged M Multi Analyzer into different vocal paths to check the balance between them, drums and bass as well. 
I've got 13 instances. That is quite a few to be shown in a single window. I'm going to start from comparing drums and bass so I uncheck all other channels. Now it is time to introduce the collisions window. This is a really cool feature as it allows us to identify a frequency range where drums and bass can interfere with each other. Here. Now I know which part of a frequency range I need to pay attention to to eliminate that collision. Easy, right? Now let me uncheck drums and bass and check some vocal tracks. Here are four vocal parts. Later, I'm going to spread them between the left and right channels, so I want them to be at the same level to get that nice chorus effect. To compare their levels, I open the loudness tab. Here they are. On the top of this window, we find three modes for loudness measurement. They correspond to EBU R128 standard. You can easily find lots of information about it on the net. As I want to compare the vocal track's total levels, I select integrated mode. And after playing back the chorus, I can easily see which track I should turn up or turn down to achieve equal loudness between them. These tricks can be very handy when you are mixing a song and you feel you cannot find what is wrong with it. However, at the end of the day, it is your ears you are trying to please, not an analyzer. So if it sounds right to you, then it is right. Let's talk one more time about collisions, for example. Even if M multi analyzer shows some, it is not necessarily a bad thing. What it means is two or more sources occupy the same range. However, it can be exactly what you need if you are trying to blend those sources. Happy analyzing and see you next time.